So now that we migrate our blueprints into the project, we can play with some fields in our project to check how we can change the destruction. So if we go to edit plugins and we type field, we will have this field system. What this field system will allow you is to create some blueprints that are required to affect chaos simulations. So what we import was these blueprints and what they do essentially is to let me move this one here. You have the field system component which you can get by tapping field system get field system component which is this one okay and then you have a bunch of components like if you type field you have like the noise field that operator field the float and physics field and then you can do a bunch of operations um basically all of them work kind of very similar. For example, we can take a look at the cluster field. Let's take a look at this one. And the cluster field has a field system component. Then it has a geometry where you will apply the force. And then you will apply the field here. This type of field determines how you can change the behavior of the field. So it usually works like this. To put it very simple, all the fields work like this. You got your component here, your physics component. Then you got a shape. It can be a sphere, it can be a cube. This will be the area of which happened the field can be apply a force to destroy something, can be an anchor, can be to slip the fields. Basically, this area will affect the chunks of your destruction. And then you have the force, which will be applied in this area. This, uh, or force or field, this field can be anything. So, we're gonna go through all these fields one by one so that we can have a look of what we can use. You can create yours um, by hand just by looking at those. Uh, but for us, uh, because we want to focus on the structure, we will use these blueprints here um, to show the most important ones. So before we start, let's open our level, our test chaos. Okay, or actually, let me create a new level. This will be, uh, let me use this one. Let me delete this. Okay, let's move this one and scale it up. Okay, you want to scale it up just in case so you have enough collision space. You don't want things to clipping with your floor if it's too thin, right? So we're gonna have an asset here. I have an asset from the Roman statue. Let's drag it here. Okay, uh, let's check the let's check the size. Looks very small. So what we're gonna do is to scale it. Just like this. Okay. It's a little bit more. Just like that. Okay. Remember, this chaos will work with, with bigger objects rather than smaller ones. So the size of your object actually depends on. Um, yeah, makes a big change of whether your simulation will work right or not. Now we cannot create a geometry like this because our scale is a scale by 6.25. So I have my modeling tools here. If you don't have it, go to plugins, 
auto modeling and you have the modeling tools editor mode what this will allow you is to have this menu here and you can check our other classes for free where you can check how you can use this for us uh, for this one uh, we want to bake the scale and rotation so we will bake use the default options accept and once it's loading once it's finished loading you will notice that here in the scale we have one again which means the original asset now has this scale by default which is what we want okay so let's call this and let's call this gym um, let's call it level chaos statue okay this will be our statue level so let's create a fracture here let's very quickly go here uniform Uh, let's create a new asset first. So let's go to Master in Chaos, Geometry Collections. This will be our Roman statue. Yes. Okay, so now we go to Uniform, Fracture. You can do a bunch of like maybe 40. Okay. And we can create another level. Like for example, we can click around here. And we can select all the contact bonds, which is basically the top. Okay. And we will fracture again for like yeah, something like this. It should be okay, maybe maybe 30. And then fracture. And this will allow us to have two levels here. So if we take a look at our asset, uh, we can Let's go back to let's go back here. So if we shift E we will explode the mesh. Okay. And if you hit shift W you will see that you have this area. Okay. If in one level you have this Okay, and if you want to explode another level, you'll have this area, which is brilliant. Okay, so we have like the smaller pieces here, and then bigger chunks here. Right, so let's change the material by sh clicking Shift B. Okay, let's move it up. And let's play. Okay, and it works. So let's make this one work a little bit nicer, very quickly. So we're gonna go to our collection. And we're gonna put level set, okay? And we can actually put a mass here. Let's try to put a mass of 2,300. So it, it, has, it can have some weight on it. And that's it. Uh, we don't need to change anything else. So, if we play now, uh, you will see that our instruction is working and it works very well. Uh, the other thing I want to do before we go into the fields is to enable some clustering. Let's add two levels of cluster. For example, let's put this one 50,000 and this one will be like 100,000. Let's let's try again. Okay, 50,000 is still very low, so let's try 150. Something like this. Okay. Let's see if you put like one more zero. Let's move this one down. You will see that you it will be harder to to break, which is which is what we want. Okay, and maybe this one can break with very easy. 
Hey, you can see that even the smaller pieces break uh, at the beginning just because they have a very low damage threshold. This means that the top ones will require less forces to destroy. If we increase this one like 150,000, then now it will destroy when we go down. You can also use sizes specific to have different damage for different sizes. That could actually work too. But for us, we will keep it like that to have more control. Okay. So now that we have our statue, uh, we will play with our fields with this one. Uh, so that we can take a look at how you can use this to actually simulate. And the first one we're going to use is the anchor field. So this will end our preparation for the fields. I know it's been uh, a little bit complicated, but it's going to get easier now. Now that we actually have everything in place, we will be able to understand what this will do. So you will have a clear idea of all the blueprints and how you can use them in different situations. And also how you can create yours later if you want to create something specific 